where members of Parliament's Standing Committee on Public Accounts Scopa want the allegations of wrongdoing at ESCOM laid bare in the independent intelligence report furnished. Scopa members visited ESCOM headquarters as they continue with hearings into former CEO Andre de Reiter's graft allegations at the power utility. The former CEO is said to have solicited money from the private sector to hire George Fever's forensic and risk to conduct the intelligence gathering operation. ACBC News economics reporter Katle Kholokhodi is at ESCOM and joins us live. Katle, good afternoon. Take us through what came out of uh, day two of the hearings as we speak. A very good afternoon to you, Lizel, and to our viewers at home. A busy three days, I must say, uh, for members of SCOPA. They were at Tutuka in Mpumalanga on Monday. On Tuesday, which was yesterday, we saw them uh, just having a sit-down and those hearings uh, continuing with the ex-ESCOM executives. And today, we saw the board of uh, ESCOM just coming in the hot seat, uh, joined, of course, by the acting interim CEO, this being uh, Mr. Kasim. So we know very well that uh, SCOPA is on the money, uh, looking at those allegations coming from uh, the former CEO of ESCOM, uh, this being Andre de Reiter. This is not the first time uh, that ESCOM is sitting or SCOPA is sitting with uh, members of the board of ESCOM just to try and get to the bottom of these allegations that were uh, more or less uh, televised, that were made uh, public and laid bare uh, by Andre de Reiter. At the center, of course, as well, Lizzo, of uh, these investigations is a forensic report, an intelligence uh, forensic report that is uh, more or less still at this point in time, not in the hands of uh, the ESCOM board confirming that and also SCOPA just probing uh, just the departure of Andre de Reiter from the power utility coming under the spotlight various issues of procurement as well in terms of processes and controls within ESCOM and SCOPA just concluding and wrapping up uh, their sit down here at Megawatt Parker with uh, just a frank talk from uh, the board of ESCOM around what they did or they've done so far after those revelations were made by Andre de Reiter. I'm going to uh, bring into the conversation now the chairperson of SCOPA, this being Mr. Mkule Kotlengwa, who joins us. It's been a busy three days, uh, but today we've seen you just uh, trying by all means to uh, put the board under the spotlight to get to the bottom of uh, these allegations. Welcome to the SABC. Maybe uh, take us through uh, your visit here to ESCOM. It's been three days, and we know very well that you guys are after the money. Well, it's still going to be a busy week. Tomorrow we're at National Treasury and Friday we're at the Road Accident Fund. But the past uh, two and a half days have been very important and I think we have made significant headway in providing uh, the necessary clarity to the matters and sourcing the necessary answers from the executives and uh, the board. In terms of their thinking, I think the two distinctions we need to make is that ordinarily ESCOM is on our radar. Um, in terms of our day-to-day -day work as, as the committee. But the revelations of February have triggered another process. Um, and at this point in time, we are uh, gathering information for the purposes of decision-making as to whether a full-scale parliamentary investigation and inquiry is warranted. The t draft terms of reference are already there, but we, of course, need to satisfy ourselves as to whether it would be worthwhile to pursue these issues or we'll get the answers now. That's point number one. The second point is that uh, there's a new board um, at ESCOM, and one must say, up front, we've got a full appreciation that it's been thrown into the deep end in the midst of crisis, really. The country is dark, the economy is suffering, people are losing jobs, and it's not business as usual. So the, the, the problems of ESCOM need not to be explained. Where we need to crack the whip is to ensure that the board actually does the work that it is expected to do. We don't doubt they are bona fides, but we must say that we are expecting them to move with a renewed sense of energy and effectiveness and speed um, on, on these issues. The third point is that, obviously, how the matter of the former CEO was handled insofar as his departure from ESCOM is concerned, uh, in our assessment may have been a missed opportunity or a squandered opportunity because the issues he raised and the allegations he raised were not interrogated by the board. And so now hindsight being the best side, it is emerging that we should, they should have actually looked at those issues. Having said that though, whilst they may be merit in pursuing the derator allegations, there is also merit in assessing whether he himself complied with PRECA, the PFMA in, in, in the pursuit and um, 
adherence to his own fiduciary responsibilities as an executive. If we've list, as we've listened to the law enforcement agencies and so on, it has emerged that there's quite a number of grey areas about his own particular conduct. All these things combined are important in preventative measures for the future about how executives um, actually uh, conduct uh, themselves. So. We, we, we are at a point now where we are going to be wrapping up this particular uh, leg. It started in uh, April, and here we are now. What is very clear is that uh, there has to be a change of culture and operations at ESCOM. They are a very head office-bound institution, yet are dependent on functionality at sites across the country which we have observed are left to their own devices, allowing for the crime, the corruption, the fraudulent activity, the maladministration, and the sabotage, which characterizes some of this uh, to take place. So all those factors combined at a local level um, create a perfect storm, which uh, allows for load shedding to prevail. So we are calling for a decentralization kind of operation, a boots on the ground uh, operation from board level to the executive to management, because there's no power generation taking place here. Here it's management and so on. It's where ESCOM matters most is on the ground and we are not getting a sense that even the executives have got a fundamental feel uh, of what is happening. So we need to plug uh, those who's, and I appreciate on behalf of the committee the very frank discussion we've had with the board uh, today as a new board for, and we've engaged with them before so they know where we stand and I think they are finding their feet and recognizing um, anew the priorities uh, which prevail and on Monday we had the chairperson of the board with us a Tutuga. Final example is to say Tutuga is in Pumalanga, which has been described as the crime scene of ESCOM. Now, what you have going on there is you had this power station with an EAF of around 15 to 17 percent. There have been necessary changes at a leadership level, at a governance level there, which are improving the situation. There's been the intervention of uh, the police and so on and the army. So it tells you that if you secure and insulate the power stations and allow them to run, you will make it. It may not solve all your problems, but it, it, it takes you in the right direction. Here they've got the uh, Mac joke with, with, with SEPs stationed at head office and uh, making sure that there's coordination of law enforcement agencies throughout the country on ESCOM related matters. So there is a lot of change that has to um, take place um, at, at ESCOM and it's clear to us that we are coming from in era one of nine wasted years and so far as state captures concerned, but also three wasted years under the previous uh, executive leadership of ESCOM. If I can come in there, uh, just finally due to time, this uh, issue of the forensic report, ESCOM board, they still don't have this report. It was just a bit of a surprise that they've been uh, six months into the position and these revelations were made in February, but they still don't have their hands on the report. Instead, they've decided to go the legal route here. Aren't you worried as members of SCOPA that here we're looking at uh, this report being central, but the board and the executive, they don't seem to know what is the content of uh, this report and the allegations that were made by Andrew Rater coming from this report. That's the problem when you have a person who becomes the institution and the system because they then own in everything. We will see what is clear is that this was not a board, then board and current board process. It was an individual's initiative, sourcing funds and so on, and the accessing of it has proven difficult. However, there are efforts that they are saying they are making but what we are comfortable with is that the SIU has already got the report. So that is a, a very important step in the right direction. But what it goes back to is that the board was informed of in the current board now, because you know there's two boards, so sometimes you have to make sure that you capture incorrectly which one. The current board was informed in January of that there's an investigation, but the details are not ventilated. And this is why then there's issue about how they handled the departure of Mr. Derita, because part of the questions and issues that should have been answered and things he should have handed over are including but not limited to him as the person who had this report appraising the board and handing it over. So I think there will be a lot of reflection from the board side about how they handle these issues moving forward, that whilst consequence management is important, it must not 
not throw the baby out with the bathwater because it was a squandered and missed opportunity not to have a frank discussion with Mr. Director before he left on the part of the board. All we can say is that we are expecting the SIU to cooperate with ESCOM in getting this uh, report and for, of course, all those others that may have it. The Hawks have indicated that they've received it and so because you've got um, substationed here, they should be able to access it. Of course, we will make the necessary follow-ups and provide the necessary assistance to empower the board. But I think what must not be lost on us is that that report may likely implicate other persons who are still within the ESCOM establishment, which may make it therefore difficult for them to hand over a report to implicated parties who will become players and referees in their further investigation of their issues. So ESCOM is stuck between the rock and the hard place. It is why it is of absolute imperative uh, importance that the law enforcement agencies, where ESCOM falls short, they are able to then uh, plug in. So the, 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 there is a need for um, cooperation between them. And I think that the fact that you've got a MAC joke here uh, is helpful, but it's not lost on us um, that ESCOM is the crime scene. And so that investigation, however it was sourced, rightly or wrongly, the fact that it was done and there's a report, it requires attention. But we must be cautious about how it's processed and handled at ESCOM. Thank you very much, sir, for your time uh, coming through as the chairperson of SCOPA. Of course, there were money spent here in terms of ensuring that this report finds uh, its meaning. We're hearing that we don't even know at this point in time if uh, that uh, you know, intelligence uh, process was concluded. Uh, but SCOPA, uh, on the money, and they're looking at, you know, instituting some parliamentary process that would ensure that some of those wrongdoings that were alerted by Andrew Derater and coming out of this intelligence report are laid bare. Lizzo, it's back to you in studio.